ladies and gentlemen, we are here today with Colin Higginbottom. This cat right here. I, I, I met him through Awaken Church. And Colin, what blows my mind here is, what, what, do we, what have we known each other? Maybe six months? Yeah. Six months. And, and I think you're with me on this. It feels like I've known you my entire life. Not only my entire life, but I, I actually think we were separated at birth. I felt that at times. You know, because I had never met another, I have never met anybody more intense than me. Or that's what people are telling me. Or passionate. And then I meet you. And the first time we met, we almost put each other through a wall. Yeah. A bit explosive. Yeah. Like literally, like we just started hitting each other. You know, being from Jersey, my love language is we we touch. We touch, we push. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, this this interview today, let me kind of set the tone here. Colin Higginbottom, uh, not only is he a pastor at Awaken Church, but he runs the business uh, apprenticeship program. It's called the Pathfinder Apprenticeship Program, which is about a five-month uh, intensive mastermind of the most elite marketplace leaders in the church, and one which I went through, which is how we met. Because in order to get to a guy like this, mm. you got to do something. And so I said, I'm joining this apprenticeship program, not knowing that six months later, not only has my life changed, my business has changed, but your program, Colin, the Awaken program, the one that you're leading, you and Melissa, your beautiful wife, has changed my ent- the ent- tr- entire trajectory of my life and business, which is how this uh, uh, um, podcast came to be. It's amazing. It, it, your podcast fl- or your your program has flushed out my podcast through it like literally stepping into my calling wow with it, which basically is what we're going to talk today about the yeah. topic that you're going to fire away on here and guys so listen get get your seats get put your seat belts on because you're going to see some fire today all right we're going to talk about convergence right yes. convergence oh oh isn't that just a sexy word it is a sexy word say it again say convergence wow <laughs> Let me also set the tone here. Not only is he uh, uh, doing this with the church, but this he he owns a uh, sustainable interior yeah. business, which is uh, more or less a commercial construction. There you interiors go. company, right? And this yeah. year, um, you you we, we're, we're at we're at year end. Yeah, where are you at? Fifty fifty million pushing 50, pushing into next 50 year. Fifty mil. And from yeah. what I hear through the grapevine, yeah. you're already got about 60, 70 on the books That's for next correct. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More coming too. And more coming that pushing you're going to make, you're going to push a hundred yeah. million dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, did you just hear that? Yeah. Here's little old me in my cute little mattress store with this <laughs> beast of a man doing as much in a week, uh, wow. I, probably more than <laughs> It's mind boggling. Yeah. So in all seriousness, man, I can't tell you how honored I am that you would take the time out of your incredibly busy, fulfilled life yeah. to, to come in here and chop it up with me for a few. Yeah. And cause, but you know what? We, we owe it to the world yeah. to make sure that they know that you exist hmm. and to make sure they know that you're doing God's work here, yeah. that you're going to bring some heat and talk about some topics that pe- it's going to be so relevant for people here, right? Absolutely. Oh, uh, absolutely. And what was it again? Oh, yeah, it was convergence. Convergence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we get into that, I like to always get a little bit of the backstory. And oh, the yeah. reason why is because I want to make sure people can, because listen to you, 50, 100 million, yeah, there's people. people can't to yeah, that. they're not going to be like, what yeah. are you crazy? That's right. not even, it's not even fathomable. Certainly. Like a million a week. Yeah. Let that digest. Yeah. And then two million a week. Yeah. That that's absurd. Okay. So get that out of there. Now we need to go back because I need people to identify that know that you're 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 a man. Yeah. Big and time. you came from extreme humble beginnings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We all go through stuff in our life, right? Yeah. We all go through stuff. And that's the one thing along the way that people need to realize is we're all going through crap in our life right some worse than others but yeah. you know what if someone's gone through what you've gone through hmm. 
and, and, and like, let's say the story that, that Colin's about to tell where he was however many years ago, 10 yeah. years, 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and if he's able now, this much later, mm. 50, $100 million, and just getting warmed up, Yeah. by the way. And I got to mention that. Because mm. I also heard you now own several franchises of yeah, Everbowl. Everbowl. Okay. Yeah, we're digging that. Um, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the list goes on and on. Yeah. I mean, you're literally just, like, these numbers that we're talking about are probably going to be just the child's play in about, in about two years, maybe, right? My point is, I want people to identify, saying, you know what, if this cat right here... Yeah went through that hmm. and now he's here that means it can happen for them yeah that's the whole gist of this entire Absolutely. podcast and my one line that i sum up this podcast is we were all born to win hmm. right Absolutely. all born to win the problem is we're all programmed to not win hmm. very early on from very early on would you agree with that i would agree with that okay so let's let's go back little because you and I are the same age. What's crazy? We're the same age. Yeah. You're 50, but you just hit 51. Just 51. You, you got September me. September 22nd. You got me. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm 51 and a few, but wow. I, we're, we're both at the five. What, what, what age do they call this? What is 50, by the uh, way? Is I, it a, the, the golden? No, the golden era is what, 60 plus? Yeah, they, they, I've heard it call it prime. Prime. <laughs> I've, I've heard, like I've heard prime, it. Who said man? that? I don't know, but I'm, I'm most of the, most of what I've heard, I'm not getting into agreement with. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Best years. Yeah. Best years are behind you. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I don't think so. No, no. I'm looking forward to this next decade, man. I, We're going to take some ground. Uh, yeah. Some territory. Hey, I'll tell you what. The definition yeah. of old age yeah. is when your memories of the past yeah. outweigh your vision for the future. Ooh. I don't know about you, J.D., but I, oh. I see ahead. I oh, see yeah, behind. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. grateful for where we've come from, oh. but where we're going, yeah. look out. Man. Yeah. I feel youthful. Oh. Springy. Spring. <laughs> Springy. <laughs> Think about this, man. 50. It's yeah. a big number. It's a big number. And I'm going to tell you, we're, we're just warming up here. Yeah. How good does that feel? It feels good. Yeah. And I hope that people that are watching this realize, like, if they're in their 30s or 40s, yeah. you, are, you have so much time yeah be patient it, yeah. it's possible but let yeah. me tell you you got to lock in yeah you got to want it you got to lock in you got to lock in you got to want it yeah and you got about what a, would you say a higher purpose you got to find that and, yeah and you got to realize you know jim collins yeah author of good to great says yep. average overnight success stories about nine years about nine years yeah, yeah. and so i think most of us you know coming into a, a new year you know, imagine a lot of us watching this. Yeah. It's going to be uh, January-ish. Yeah, right. And, Mid to late uh, January. Yeah. yeah. So yep. we're, most of us come into the, come out of the blocks of a new year. Yeah. Thinking, I'm going to get so much done this yeah. year. This is yeah. my year. Yeah. And, you know, Mark Batterson, yeah. author of um, The Circle Maker. Yeah. He, he says that most people grossly, grossly overestimate how much they can get done in a year. Yeah. But grossly underestimate how much they can get done in a decade mm. and i had to start thinking decade-minded plans wow. decade-minded disciplines yeah. Yeah. and yeah. i'm not going to get yeah. there overnight watch your water by the There's way put no, that over there i appreciate you that okay. you're not going to get yeah. where you feel called to get mm -hmm. overnight yep. there is no overnight success overnight success is a bit of a grind yep married to a whole lot of grace and we got to find that tension and yep. so hopefully we can unwrap that a little bit today yes <laughs> i love that man i yeah. really love that because it's one thing that i've learned because we all and especially in the word a day and age with the information and kids are just they want it quick they think yeah. it's overnight oh my yep. god i'm 25 no. i'm not successful oh. that's not the way it works right so that's profound what you said okay so let's go back real quick yeah. give, me, give me a little backstory mm. of Little Colin. Yeah. Wow. Back in the day, sure. parents. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great. Where'd you grow up? What sure. area? Yeah. I grew up in the great uh, state of Washington in Washington. the Northwest. Wow. My parents moved here from England. My my dad um, got out of the army. He was a boxer. Yeah. In the army. No kidding. Yeah. Six three. I Get don't know what happened here. to me. I'm five nine, <laughs> six foot negative three. Yeah. And uh, my mom was five. A foot. sexy five nine. Uh, I'm pretty sexy. Yeah. Five yeah. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I hear. Yeah. What my mom a, says. A great <laughs> my mom, five foot, yeah. little Scottish, little yeah. brave heart. Yeah, a little coming brave. Coming out of Peterhead, Scotland. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, so they migrated over to the Northwest no way. Uh, in their 20s with nothing. Wow. I yeah, didn't and I'm, know I'm this. grateful for that because I feel like some of my entrepreneurial spirit might yeah. not have come through being born into a wealthy family or anything because that wasn't the case. Right. But there was something in them yeah. that wanted to venture out of what they knew yeah. and what was secure and what was comfortable. Yep. And they traveled across the world to the Northwest where they had my brother and my sister, and yep. I was the baby. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm the youngest. Wow. Yeah. Un I, see, see? I know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So they came back in their 20s. Yeah. Okay, so give it to me. Washington. Yeah. Give me a little so school. Growing yeah. up, you know, we're taught, like, the only sport that matters when you're from the United Kingdom is soccer or football, ah, British football. So I grew it. up playing soccer. Yeah. And, and I loved it. I was decent at it. Yeah. Um, lacked confidence, though. Yeah. Mm. And I was a good athlete. Yeah. But I was also really good at being in environments where I could be the best. Mm. And so if being the best was ever questioned yeah. or challenged or yeah. there was a fear of failure. Yeah. Um, my need for approval, even as a young kid, was so high that I needed to put myself in environments where I was the best. Mm. So I'd want to play on a little bit lower level team really? where I was the best player. No kidding. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. Super sad, actually. It's, it's super the greatest sad. way to never develop yes, potential. Totally. To stay in a in an environment where you're not challenged. It's the opposite of what yeah. you should actually yeah. do. Surround I, yourself with people better. I know. Wow. I know. And I discovered early on that I had a huge um, fear of failure mm. and a gross need for approval. Wow. That's a bad combination. That'll get you nowhere pretty fast. But frankly, not all that uncommon. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. It's probably more common it, absolutely. than uncommon. 100%. Yeah. Beautiful. Go. So it got me into all kinds of stuff, you yep. know, whether it was a relationship, whether it was a girlfriend, yep. you know, I, I couldn't really be faithful to one girl yeah. because I was afraid mm. if I gave my hundred percent, what if it wasn't enough? Yeah. So I needed to have a little something on the side just in case. And yep. same with sports and everything no I did. Yeah, yeah. Grossly underachieving wow. all the potential in the world, which potential is a beautiful word. It is word when you're 14. Yeah. It's a miserable word when you're like. 34 yeah. and you're starting to feel the pressure of potential and yeah. not measuring up. Yeah. And, yeah. And so, you know, I ended up getting a scholarship to yep. play soccer yep. in Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. I didn't get um, raised a Christian, didn't know God okay. as a kid, really got into all kinds of problems, you know, yeah. a need for approval and a yeah. fear of failure would yeah. drive you to all kinds of oh, stuff. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Girls oh. partying, yep. and underachieving. Yep. And, and, um, I found the, the greatest thing to keep you straight is a purpose and a passion mm. that you're ferociously attached to. Yeah. But when I was young, unfortunately, I was too afraid to fail to be attached to real purpose because real purchase purpose is real expensive. It is. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So I ended up yep. graduating though, somehow, some yep. way from yep. Hawaii Pacific University, my senior year of college and waiting so tables. Yeah. So your your brother and sister. Okay, yeah, yeah. Take us back. Give yep. me a quick thing on them. Yeah, how yeah, were they yeah. with how was the relationship with you and your brother and sister? So I was the youngest yep. of three. Yep. My brother Kevin was nine years older than wow. me. Wow. Yeah. And when I was young, I actually was a bit embarrassed by my brother. He had a lot of problems with uh, alcohol and drugs. No kidding. Yeah. In fact it was when he was um, thirty years old, he went through a recovery program in uh, at Christian Faith Center in Seattle, Washington. And it changed his life. Wow. And so not being a Christian kid and kind of being yeah. ashamed of my brother, it was the first time where I was like, man, something's different mm. about Kevin. And yeah. He's gone on to become one of my heroes. He's gone on to become wow. one of the most influential men in my life and one of the greatest men on the planet wow. today. And yeah, what would seriously. you attribute that to? Like well, his, his switch was yeah, that? his faith, man. He found God. He f and we didn't grow up knowing God in our family. Yeah. You know, and how so, did he get into it? And you didn't. Yeah. Or I mean, did you? Well, at I, that time, at the time I didn't. Yeah. But as somebody who knows your brother pretty well, you can tell when there's genuine change. Yeah. And when I saw him different, yeah, he was the only person that didn't relapse, you know, and drugs and alcohol is a real issue. It's a today. real thing for and sure. When you see something that really changes somebody, yeah. you want to know what, what's the story here. Yeah. You know? Well, and, and so wow. I was, he, he, I was a person that if it wasn't working for you, don't talk about it. Yeah. I'm still that kind of you, you person. Are, yeah. If it ain't working, you don't have a voice. Yeah, yeah. 
But if it's working, I'm interested. I picked up on this. Yeah, this is this is me. And, right. Uh, well, what's the and this quote by the way, by the way, now that you're saying this, the the whole premise of my the, the podcast here, yeah. of, you know, we're all born to win. The word win is just it, uh, you, you're the one who's basically ingrained this on me. You, you're the one. Wow. You, you're the because your whole program, Path by yeah. Awaken. You, the bottom line is you you guys are winning and you're helping people win. You're obsessed yeah. with winning yeah. and obsessed with helping people yeah. win. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So, all right, so go. Well, let me just add to that. Yeah. We believe that what we believe, yeah. in, you know, our ideology, yeah. if we care enough about it and we want to influence people yeah. with what we believe to be true, yes. if you're not winning, yeah. nobody cares. <laughs> And that's what I was getting to, because that quote right there, you said it recently. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Right. That's our lifeblood. In fact, we care so much about what people believe today. Yeah. And we want to influence people's belief system. We do. That's right. Because if you're believing in the wrong system, yeah. you're going to get the wrong results. Yeah. We care so much about people getting the right results that we want to influence their belief system. Yeah. The only way to influence somebody's belief system is to influence them right by winning. Yeah. It's, if you're not winning, nobody cares. Nobody cares, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to that again. Nobody cares. If you want people to start caring about what you think and what you believe, start winning. <laughs> and that's our show. And just <laughs> Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Which brings me back to my brother, JD. Yes. Yeah, give it to me. So for the first time wow. in my life, a man who was my brother, my yeah. sibling, my yep. older brother, who had no influence over me, yeah, none, began to have influence. Wow! Because his life started to work. Mm. He started to be healthy, reliable, trustworthy, confident, and I was attracted. Who isn't right. attracted yeah. Yeah. to a life that's working? Right. You know. And, and by the way. Just on that note, for the listeners and watchers, that's what winning's about. This isn't just about no, money or about financial numbers. stuff. It's not no, about numbers. No. Numbers are an outward expression Correct. of something healthy on the inside. That's right. And no amount of numbers will ever mask health on the inside. That's right. Yeah. 100%. Okay. So he was now inspired. Now he's inspiring yeah. you yeah. because he went through, he found his faith, he found, he his found faith. God. Yeah. And at this point, he was about, how old was he? He about? was 30. 30. I was okay. 21. You were 21. Yeah. And you were about to graduate from Hawaii? No, I was, I had gone to two years of uh, Juco College Got playing it. soccer. Okay. In, uh, at Highline Community yeah. College. Okay. In King County. <laughs> King County. Oh, yeah. yes. And uh, a friend of mine who was one of my best friends growing up, Jason Prenovos, he had, he was a year older than me and got invited to play at Hawaii Pacific University. And he's like, Colin. These guys, um, they're a decent team. Yep. They have money for scholarships, and they're looking for people. Why don't you come out? I think you can make this team. And Jason was one of my best friends, yeah. and so he invited me out to Hawaii Pacific. So, so literally, J.D., about two months before I go out to HPU, yeah. Hawaii Pacific, to try out for the team and, and go on to make the team, my brother invites me to his church mm. now. If his life wasn't working, right. I wouldn't have been no, interested. No, absolutely not. But because I saw so much change, yeah. um, I was oh, I was interested. Like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. Now I show up, I rock up at this church, and it was it was cracking, man. It was alive. It yeah. was it was excellent yeah. and powerful. Wow. And I felt like the guy who was preaching was preaching to me. Yeah, like it was a big crowd, but yeah. I thought like absolutely. I was the only one there. The message was for you. It was, man. No and doubt. It was like, how do you know? what's going on in my world. Exactly. You know? How can you be speaking yeah. directly to me? This yeah. is strange. Yeah. And you have, you know, I didn't have a point of reference for that yeah. up until I was right. 21 years old, yep. you know? So anyway, uh, I ended up responding, but sometimes I don't know about this for you. I wasn't really ready to dive, to dive into mm -hmm. a new life. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of yeah. had some old, um, ways that yeah. I wasn't really excited to, right. to change. Yeah. So I, even though I started to see it was real, yeah. I wasn't ready Be, because at that time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. You didn't see that your ways were that bad. No, 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 no. I didn't. Right. I was a okay. good guy. Exactly. Come on. My you're mom just, at least told me. I was yeah, a good guy. exactly. Your mom loved you. You were amazing. You just love, you're just having fun. Yeah. I you was. know, what's life about? Yeah. It's about having fun, letting it fly. Big time. Yeah. 
big time. <laughs> Plus, I was excited to go off to school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And once yeah. you get to school, all that stuff's oh, personified. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, next level. All right. Yeah. Unbelievable. All so, right. ended up there. Yeah. Um, in Hawaii and my senior year of college. Yep. Um, hey, can't say it was the most illustrious yeah. sports So, that career. was it for church, by the way. You went one time. Yeah. One time. Never went back. No, not 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 really, because I was moving. Okay. And it was my brother's church. Yep. And I just back in Washington. But something happened there. It like did. it yep. was it was yeah. it might have just been something a seed. that resonated. Yeah. Might have just been a, you know, a deposit, but something was different in me. Yeah. From that experience. Yep. And even though I wasn't ready to really feed it yeah. and give it space, yep. I was I was marked by that moment. Mm. Not just by my brother. Yeah. But I was marked by something happened to me in that service. Wow. Uh, and I would find out later a little bit more how meaningful it was. Wow. Yeah. So my senior year of college, now this, I wasn't really planning to share this, yeah. but you're digging deep. Give it man. to me. This is good. Give it to me. Something happened to me. Yeah. Um, I was dating a waitress at, at a, um, I was working at the Lures Street Fish Company <laughs> in Waikiki, Hawaii. Waikiki, no kidding. Oh, no kidding, man. And I even learned a little Japanese. No way. I, I'll share some right now on your podcast. Yeah, First give time. To, give it to me. Shinsana Sakana. That sounded really good. It does, doesn't it? It, it did. means the fresh fish <laughs> is delicious. I love that. The problem was, is when you speak Japanese, you're not supposed to enunciate. Yeah. And I'm a passionate guy yeah. like you. Yeah. So I'd be like, Shinsana, <laughs> Sakana. And they'd be like, Caesar running Salada for, too, <laughs> you know, and running for the hills. Yeah, running for the hills. Yeah. I, I didn't realize I just needed to say it. Jeez, yeah, just nice. And, yeah, fun. nothing. Not everything has to be intensely but, put. <laughs> but every, but even then, I was so passionate about competing. I would do anything. To, me and my friend Preston yeah. would compete for who could sell the most fresh fish because that was the competition in the restaurant. You know, and probably learn more about business. Yeah. Which I love business, yeah. by the way. Yeah, I yeah. believe business is a calling. Yeah. I learned more about business waiting tables really? in Waikiki than in my four years of business college. You're Hands me. down. Hands down. Listen to that, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm passionate about business. Yes. Yeah. Clearly. Yep. Give me one. Break that down. I love. Okay. I absolutely yeah. love that. Okay. Break that down for me. Well, what would you say you've learned? Yeah. Was it just watching the how a, a restaurant works, how the things go? Hmm. The customer service interaction, providing yeah. service for others. What yeah. was it that about that? Great, great. The biggest thing I learned is whether people have a bad eating experience yeah. or a good one, they're going to wake up tomorrow hungry. No kidding. And I had the ability hmm. to determine what kind of experience they were going to have. Yeah. They're going to eat anyway. Yep. I'm either going to give them an average experience. Yep a bad experience, or I'm going to exceed expectations. I discovered the secret of business yeah. is exceeding expectations. 100%. And, and experience. And, and experience and giving people an experience. And they don't teach that in books. No, you don't. You don't really. And then I also learned this. I learned that the secret to successful business is solving problems for people. No doubt. And in fact, the more exceptional you get at solving problems, the more you're trusted with people's business. Yep. And I became a problem solver, whether it was mm. an undercooked steak yep. or a, yep. I found that the more challenges that came across the table, yep. Um, yep. the more opportunities I had to learn and earn long-term clients. And so, yeah, I just loved the rest. I still love the restaurant business. Dude, that's so powerful, Colin. I yeah. hope because there's service people watching this yeah. or will be. Um, and because I, I always want people to realize whatever job they're in, oh. don't look at it as like, no. don't look as like, look at yeah. it as a learning experience. Big no matter time. what you're doing or where you're going. Yeah. The quality of our lives dependent upon the way we interact with other individuals. 100%. So when you have a, a job that you're actually frontline belly to belly with someone yeah. that's invaluable it is it is so that's yeah. profound what you just said and you learn what you love and what you don't love i learned i love communicating mm. i love being in front of people yeah i love presenting i love sharing i didn't realize that i didn't have a you know a, a point of reference for communicating yeah. in front of people yes. prior to that point right no need to right 
and you love uh, making people feel good. Speaking of convergence, man, yes. that's my favorite thing. Oh. Giving people an exceptional experience. Mm. Yeah. All right. So this is college. Okay? Yeah. What, yep. Now, what was the, you, you were, you said you weren't going to share this. Yeah, I wasn't going to share this. Okay. Um, so but give, give me, I mean, <laughs> what was it, the girlfriend? Was the girlfriend Asian? This is a oh, side no. note. <laughs> <laughs> No, she wasn't. There, there was a couple that were the over couple. there, but uh, well, again, when you have a gross need for approval, you'll feed it. You yeah. feed your needs, yeah. um, any yeah. way you can. Right. And, and you know, girls and relationships was one of the ways that yeah. I really, yep. really needed. I felt needy to to yep. be validated as a man. Yeah, got you it. Know? Got it. But my senior year of college, that seed I talked to you about, that yep. that yeah. experience That's I right. had, um, began to take shape. Yep. And and I would be like a guy that goes through the highs and lows of like everybody, yep. you know, um, things are going great with the girl at the time and you're feeling good. Had a sweet crotch rocket, Did CBR really? 600. Oh, really? Oh yeah. So sweet. Wow. Man. Just living the high life over there and thinking you're pretty cool. How are you paying your bills? Uh, Just the restaurant man. was the well, serving tables was, it was doing so it. Funny. So I got my tuition paid for yeah. by playing being a soccer Sponsor, player. Yeah, I was yeah, decent. Yeah. And then um, my mom would send money. Uh, for my poor mom, of course. You know, probably living off beans here yeah. in Seattle while I'm you <laughs> living know, on a pretending on a to bike. be a starving student over there, <laughs> making legit tips. Yeah. I mean, that's the oh, other yeah. thing I liked about absolutely um, waiting tables Cash. is measurables. Like oh, yeah. you go home and you could tell yes. how you performed. Yeah, absolutely. You perform well. You go home with more cash. Directly. It wasn't taxable. Directly proportionate. I mean, it was supposed to be yeah. taxable. Of but course. hey, at that time, hey, I mean, come on. Yeah. It was so long ago. It was, it was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Don't but, worry about it. But you're going home with cash in your pocket. Oh, yeah, the best. You know? Yeah. So I had a CBR 600. Um, Did your mom know you had a CBR 600? Yeah, yeah, she found out later. <laughs> she wasn't as excited that about it. That she was it. funding the yeah, fuel she, bill she, for, she, the, for the... She CBR. thought it was a moped. Well, a moped. it was close. Yeah. You know? But, yeah. yeah. wheels and a motor. But, you know, you're... When, when things are going well and you're playing well or your relationships are going well, you don't really have any need for God at yeah. the time. You yep. know, you yeah. got it covered and, right. you know, your, right. your hopes are high. And, yep. you know, typical guys, when we're performing well, we feel well. Yeah. yeah. Girls are different. When they feel well, they perform well. Yep. But for me, when I'm performing, I feel pretty hopeful. Oh, yeah. The problem yep. is, yep. is there's highs and lows in every season. I yep. tore my ACL over oh, really? there. Yeah. Wow. And kind of went through a tough spell where I started to, you know, was was questioning some things mm. and, and turned back to this little thing that my brother introduced me to. Yeah. Turned back to God. And so I found a little local church over there. Yeah. Bill Stonebreaker. Stonebreaker? <laughs> That's his name? It's a pretty cool name. It's a great name. When you got a last name like Higginbottom, yeah. you kind of covet other people's name. And Stonebreaker was like Stonebreaker? Yeah, yeah. He was a surfer guy and Ugh. just a cool guy over there. And I remember I'd go visit once in a while. And, and you know, you just feel a little yeah. more connected, a little yep, more connected absolutely. to God. Sure. Still not ready. Right. I mean, I'm a difficult guy yeah. Yeah. to go all in. Yeah. I got to know that I know. Mm. And it's got to be my decision. Yeah. Nobody's going to make that decision for me. Right. That's my decision. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't quite ready for that. But yeah. for whatever reason... I was venturing back into mm. kind of this religious thing. Or, yeah, well, yeah. That's what I thought at it the was. time. Yeah. 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 I didn't realize how much more it is than that. Right. But when you have a limited perception of things, that's what you, you know, that's what you're going after. Yeah. And somebody gave me this business card and it had a little yeah. scripture verse on it. Huh. And I wasn't planning on sharing this, but yeah. if you want to get to where it all began, yes. Genesis. Yes. It started with somebody gave me this little business card yeah. and it had this scripture verse on it. It says when two or three, Come together in my name, I'll be with you. Huh. And so one night we're at my apartment in Hawaii. Okay. Yep. I lived down below was this giant Hawaiian guy who smoked weed all day. Yeah. I've, I'll never forget this guy, but upstairs we yeah. lived. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I brought, her name was, was Mary. She came over to the apartment and I'm like, it felt like a Ouija board, you know, remember back in the yeah. day when you just experimented with yeah. all kinds of stuff. Oh, I was yeah. like experimenting yeah. with a little Christian scripture. Yeah. And who gave you the card again? I can't remember. Just somebody at okay. probably Bill Stonebreaker's church. You know, I don't know. But somebody gave me the card and I just stuck it in my little wallet and no, pulled it, it out. So it was just a scripture card. Just a scripture. It wasn't just a business all, card with scripture on the back. It was a scripture card, like wow. a business card with only a scripture on Interesting. it. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. And... um 
you know how it is. Yeah. When on your journey, all yeah. kinds of things kind of come up that it, yeah. you, you don't even know exactly where they came you can't from. Can't explain it. No. Yeah. But you see somebody luring you or, or orchestrating. Yeah. You know something a little more important. Absolutely. So guess yeah. what? I said, you know what? We should give this a try. Yeah. I had no nobody ever taught me to pray. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. we didn't grow up. You know, maybe maybe in uh, high school, went to Kennedy High School where yeah. I learned yeah. the the Mother Mary prayer. I had a big fat PE teacher with three teeth and always lived with a lollipop in his mouth. <laughs> and every day was Hail Mary, yeah. Mother of God. Yeah. Pray for the pole sores or yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, going on and on. And and I remember that prayer. Yeah. But I'd never prayed like a real authentic right. prayer from my heart. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh and so we just said, Hey, God, your word here says if two or three people come together in my name, yep. you'll be with us. Mm. We just invite you to come. Yeah. J D, man, yeah. I'm telling you. Two and a half hours. I ended up back on the back patio. Yeah. And I had a crazy encounter with God. You're kidding me. Crazy. Like, Come on. But for two and a half hours, I felt like I was not, we weren't talking. I was just on, in my own little world really having an encounter. And this was with, at the apartment? Yeah, at the apartment. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and then and what happened during this time? You don't even, you be, so you were back there and he was talking to you? What, yeah, what was well, said? Was what did he like say? Feeling things, seeing things. Yeah. Like, experiencing this was things. after you said the card you yeah. and her said hey yeah let's yep. do this yep i don't know if she had the same experience i did i just know that something happened to me yeah that night that's that i've never been the same ever from that night that night i've never and it was within what hours of reading this card with her within a second of praying <laughs> prayer it was so crazy Are that I used to think that that's just what happened when you prayed, yeah. you know, cause yeah. I, we weren't like taught. I, yeah. It was just kind of, but I think there was something to be honest. I think there was something genuine in my heart, mm. hungry yeah. for something Ready. more than I had. And I also feel like there was a call on my life that needed to be ignited by something bigger and more potent and more purposeful than I had. Yeah. And you felt that that night. Well, that night, JD, and I don't care how much of this you edit, you can take as little or much out, but I'm going to tell you. No, this is this is that, good stuff. That night, I had an encounter with the holiness of God, and I didn't even know, you know, what that meant. Yeah. I just saw something that was perfect. Yeah. And potent and powerful that loved me. Mm. Wow. And I think for my whole life, my issue was. I could only be loved when I was performing. When you were performing and being the best. Being the best. And Until I, that moment. And as a result, I was so driven by my own need for approval that I would do anything for it. Yeah. In other words, if that meant it cost you something, yep. I would take from you to get what I needed to yep. feel valuable. And so what happened in that moment is I had an encounter not only with how good and powerful and potent and holy, which just means set yes. apart. Yep. Okay. Um, not only did I have an encounter with that, but I also had an encounter with me. Mm. And I'll tell you, I'd never seen wow. anything in my life more self-oriented than me. No kidding. Never. And it scared me. It was like, wow, that... It was almost like I could see the inner workings of mm. all my motives and they were all self oriented at their heart. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. And not to be dropping like scriptures on the real deal podcast. Yeah. Dude, dude, but this I'm gonna is, tell you something. You're in here so because this I want me. Colin to be calm. If you want me to I be me, to let it rip. I can talk business let all day. Fly. But the genesis of why I do what I do yeah. started that night. That night. And you weren't going to share this. Oh, well, I, you know, I, I told you I'd get to this. Oh, uh, you're crazy. I, I mean, you told could do this. you yeah. that you're like, well, what are we going to say? No, 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 we're, we're, yeah. we're, don't worry. Yeah. It's, we're just going to let it flow because this right here, and there's people from our church yeah. that I don't know. I don't, they don't even know this. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now they're like, ooh, I yeah. loved this guy before. Now huh. this is powerful stuff. Yeah. Really powerful. Yeah. All right, keep going. Give okay, so. You know, the reality is, J.D., 
I had to come to grips with the fact that I was I was mm. really a self oriented human. And yeah, it was it was gross. Like the when you I feel like if you want to get to the bottom of every problem in the world, <laughs> it's self orientation. Colin, it's, it's Colin. Colin. Yeah. The, the last two nights, there was a girl here, Jax. Huh. The entire interview was exactly what you just said right now. Her whole business is helping people find the self-orient, the, who they are, their self-orientation. Huh. It starts there. Yeah. You're right there. Yeah, I, I would agree. And anytime you're 100% you have correct. self-motives driving your life, you're going to train wreck. Yeah, yeah. You, we have to be oriented to to serve and to help people yep. and to benefit others but when your whole magnetism is i exist to benefit this guy yeah yeah that's where life gets really ugly it gets ugly <laughs> yeah it doesn't end well it doesn't it doesn't go well no no how can you serve someone else when your primary purpose is to serve you you can't you can't you can't so that i can't say it Unbelievable. got fixed in that moment. Okay, right, right. But it got exposed in that moment. Mm. And for the first time in my life, the number one thing I needed was to be loved for who I was, yep. not because I performed well. Right. And I've forever shifted from performing from approval. I've, I've, I've yep. shifted to performing from approval from a performing for approval. Yep. And yep. so for, gosh, 24 years of my life, that's how old, my old I am when yep. this happens, yep. J.D., yep. Yep. I've been performing for approval. Yep. And then for the first time in my life, yep. it's not like the performance mechanism just went away. Yeah. We're created to perform. We are. We We're are. created to produce. Absolutely. We're created to win. Yeah. But when the motive of winning is to feed this yeah. vacuum thing in my soul that yep. cannot ever be fulfilled basically the ego the ego yeah 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 the ego yep and so that got shifted that night mm. and uh, i was never the same now i wish i could say that there was an awakened church around yeah to help me process all this new change right yeah because it was a radical change in yeah. my life yeah. at 24 years old i had a brand new set of ideas mm. a brand new set of passions i was red hot yeah. For the first time in my life. Wow. I, for the first time in my life, J.D., met somebody, met somebody in, in God, in Jesus Christ, that made me want to live for somebody other than myself. It was the first time wow. I had ever been on this planet with a passion to live for somebody other than me. And let me tell you, you, you know, you're, the way you're putting it, like you're, you, it's almost like you're like, man, it's, that was terrible, but. This is you're at twenty four to realize this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the twenty four. That's so young. I know. So frankly, mm -hmm. in in the grand scheme of things, relatively speaking, mm -hmm. you're ahead of the game. Yeah. So I think so. At that point, twenty four years old. Not yeah. again. Not saying you got cured. No. But you were at least awakened. Awakened. Yeah, awakened to the reality of God and how much He loved me and how potent He was. And we used to do wow. all kinds of crazy drugs back then. Oh, and yeah. I wasn't like a drug addict, but right. I was, uh, uh, I used to enjoy partying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ecstasy yes. and drinking. Yes. And you know what I mean? Oh, and, yeah. And I remember we used to have this saying um, <laughs> that my encounter with God was very um, experiential. Yeah. And I don't know. Listen, I think God, like, reveals himself to the yeah. way you're wired. Yeah. You know? Yep. If you're into like learning yep. and academics, he's probably going to show up in the way you're wired. But for me, I was very experiential. I like to feel right. And, yep. uh, and I remember I used to love to do ecstasy. Oh yeah. I wasn't planning to you share know, this on the you, show either. And you let know me tell I mean? you something, Colin, and believe me, <laughs> do you know what? And, and this is my box I wasn't going to share this. My favorite <laughs> thing ever huh. was ecstasy. Wow. Well, that's so funny, man. Yes, mom. Yeah, it was sorry. sorry, sorry. I know I had mentioned it in the past a couple of times here and there, but now it's out in the open. Yeah, so well, there hey, you go. welcome to the real deal. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 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 you're doing ecstasy. Go. Yeah, but but I I didn't do it that much. Yeah, I yeah, had done yeah, it the previous yeah, Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of had a really weird trip, you know. <laughs> but uh, but how God revealed Himself to me was it was better than ecstasy. 
Mm. It was very wow. like I felt like love and just power mm. and it, my whole being. Yeah. The way I saw things, like the color, the colors changed. Yeah. It was so dramatic yeah. and potent yeah. when I met God that I used to say this, there's no high like the most high. Yeah. And it went on. It sounded yeah. kind of religious. And yeah. now yeah. I don't say yeah. it anymore because it sounds kind of goofy. But when it was just <laughs> real and yeah. it was just my thing. Yeah. yeah. I used to just feel that you way. Like, yeah, like he took me over yeah. because he was better than anything I ever had. Even wow. the best things, even the yeah. things I love the most. Yeah. Yeah. And I became very kind of consumed with God. No kidding. No kidding. I moved home. So I this just, is after you graduated, just graduated. Okay. I, this happened Went in home. Hawaii, um, moved home, started working for a man named Bill Busey. I love how, you know, you remember the exact names. Oh yeah, I'm a Stonebreaker. Was it Stonebreaker? Was Stonebreaker? Stonebreaker. <laughs> and the way and you and you and you slow it down. Bill Stonebreaker. Like what was the other guy? Macy. Was it? Which one? What was the new one? Macy. Oh 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 no, Bill Busey. <laughs> you can't well, just say yo, it's Bill 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 Busey. Oh, Bill. Well, Busey. Get this. This is this is good. You're really you're pulling the good stuff. I know because I got it. Bill was the first man I ever wanted to be like. I'd never Bill met Busey. I'd never met a guy that I wanted. How old was he? He was probably fifties. Probably fifty? Probably my age. And you felt were, like he was yeah. an eternity away from me. Yeah. They called him the Silver Fox. Though. The Silver Fox. Oh, he was just a stud. I get a friend here locally that we call Silver really? Fox. Nick oh. Streeper, my guy. Yeah. Nick, hopefully you'll be listening to this someday. I yeah. love you, brother. You want to hear something crazy. Yes I do. So Speaking of pathfinders, yeah. we're gonna tie this thing together we somehow, oh, some yeah. way. Yeah, if we yeah. can get out of me. We, we can get done. me to thirty. No, 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 no. We're the, the people that the people that that especially know you or think they know yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now they're like, okay, this is oh, this is good stuff. Yeah. You know, the convergence is cool and all, but now I'm really getting yeah. to know the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Convergence is cool and all, but not, now I'm getting to really know who this guy. is. Yeah, okay, go. So go. Okay, so Bill's the first guy I ever wanted to be like. Yeah. And uh, he owns a commercial flooring company called Pacific ah, Modular. That's how, listen, I, here we go. most young kids don't grow up wanting to be in the yeah, flooring the, industry. That's not that sexy. <laughs> no. Um, but the way Bill, you say it is. But, but Bill was a sexy guy, attractive, yeah. drove a nice car, um, was a very good business leader, yeah. and was my first professional Christian I'd ever met. mm and but so you're a professional Christian. That's well, what you call, I don't know. I didn't. You've got a, a interested Christian and now yeah. a professional. Yeah. Well, he was he was a guy who loved God. Yeah. But yeah. he was super good at business. Wow. And I remember he had a couple. Is that sayings. what professional Christian means? I mean, I, he's good I, at business and he's a Christian. Yeah. Like okay. I, I would say, yeah. like got there's it. not enough of those. Got it. It's one of the reasons we mm. started Pathfinders, Pathfinders is correct. because we don't like cheap Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like people that suck at business suck at and that give you their card with a Christian, you know, yeah. slogan on it or yes. something, you know, hide behind the scripture. Hate that stuff. Yeah. In fact, yeah. that's the thing I'm most allergic to <laughs> is lame Christianity, lame. pathetic Christianity, <laughs> unprofessional Christianity. Okay. And he wasn't that like, side note, by the way. And again, like I don't have a point of reference for any of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so I'm telling him my story and he's, Taking me under his wing, yeah. little by little, yeah. And the more I get to know him, for the business, more I, he was taking yeah, his wing for business, for business. But he cared about me, yeah. So he not only was the first guy I wanted to be like, but he took a real liking to me. Mm. I still remember the first time he wrote a card to me that said, "Young, but wise." Mm. It's amazing how powerful words words from somebody can be. Yep, you know. Yeah, and I remember those words. I remember one Christmas, the first time he said, "I love you, man." And I was like, wow, like, it's not like I lacked that as a yeah. kid, but when yeah. somebody you, uh, you look up to that you're emulating, that yeah. you see their life yeah. and you, you, you would like to aspire to be where they are. This guy told me, I love you young, but wise, you know, and he's, wow. he's shaping me yeah. and he's modeling for me, yeah. not only business, yeah. which so happens we happen to own a commercial flooring company yep. right now. Right. Uh, about 10 times the size of what yeah. Bill ever built. Yeah. But he was such a catalyst yes. for me seeing somebody that I wanted to one day become. No kidding. He also said this, a little business tip. Yeah. If you'll provide extraordinary service, mm -hmm. 
you can make extraordinary profit. Yep. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. And most business owners don't get that. No. They're just It's a race to the bottom. Race to the bottom. How much profit can I make on this sale right here? I'm not thinking ahead at the future sales, the future business, loyalty. We could go on and on about this. Big time. Simple. Now, did you get that from your father growing up? Yeah, so great great question. Um, I mean, this is a complicated thing. I just I just lost my mom oh, to, sorry to hear dementia. That. So mm. but my mom, I was the youngest of three. Yep. And my mom she really didn't do me a great service in the way she protected me from my father. My mm-hmm. dad worked hard. Yeah. He'd get up at five in the morning. Yep. I wouldn't see him in the morning. He'd get home at, you know, six o'clock at night. Yep. He coached my soccer teams. He loved me. Yeah. But my mom kind of hmm. protected me from him. So if I'd get in trouble, my mom wouldn't share some of the uh, stuff, you know, that yeah. I would do, yeah. whether I got caught stealing. Right. And so my dad kind of lived disconnected from me. He loved me like crazy. And yeah. we're still pretty tight. Yeah. But um, I was missing the mark of a father on my life. Yes. Not because he was a bad one, yeah, but because I just didn't, I wasn't connected to him. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. that makes a it lot does. of sense, it does. you know? Yeah. And Bill was one of the first guys that started to put a mark on me. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. You know? Really cool. Really cool. Now, here's the challenge. Yeah. So, we'll segue a little yeah. bit here. Let's segue. Because I want to get to um, convergence. Oh, yeah. Convergence. Yeah. So... But this is excellent, dude. I love wow. this. Is that I, enough? I, I mean, love this. Is that this. too much backstory? No. Man. These guys know. These guys are they are trying to reel me in all the time, but I don't care. Yeah, because you do your thing. There's nothing more powerful than a backstory. I'm yeah, sorry, but there isn't because people are watching this right now, and if you're tuning out, well, then they're not our yeah, it's all audience good. anyway. No problem. But the people that are tuned in, because I want people to, because nobody knew this about you. Yeah. Everybody just thought you, hey, you've been, yeah. you've been God the whole life, Christian. Oh, yeah, gosh, no. firing away on all cylinders. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you were admitting that you're sel- you were selfish, uh-huh. self-centered. So keep uh-huh. going. Give it to me. Well, so, so it, Bill, we're, we're back. Get back to Bill. And Bill starts teaching me what yeah. it looks like to yep. be a Christian. Yep. He's like, and I didn't know anything. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, and I think there's a lot of people out there that are kind of waking up to God. But they, yeah. I mean, give me some training reels. I don't even yeah. know where to right. start. Right. And, uh. And he's like, well, you need to start by going to a church. And so I started going to a church. It was uh, a four square church, which yep. is, you know, I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. You know, but I, and he, I was ready to jump into stuff now. Yep. And so I jumped in yep. and uh, I started loving it, yeah. man. And yeah. I loved worship and yeah. being a guy that likes to experience God. And they had great worship there. It was in Seattle, Washington. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I was getting super into it, getting super, I got baptized. That wow. was like a crazy, yeah crazy i'll still i still remember that wednesday night and and um but uh eventually i started to feel like man i want to start a new i want to start a company yeah. for for bill and they had a desire to go down to portland and so i remember just feeling and you know early on i would feel god like speak to me about yeah. stuff but most of the time it had to do with like business ideas mm. it wasn't generally like you know uh anything other than just ideas for business. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so yep. I just started to feel like I needed to move down to Portland. Yeah. And wanted to start the Portland branch of uh yeah. of Pacific Modular <laughs> for Bill Busey. Busey. <laughs> <laughs> and I presented it to him and I put together this whole plan. Yeah. And yeah. what I found is when I started to work for Bill is what I put my hands to really worked. Yeah. I was good at it. Yeah. I was solving problems. Yep. I was figuring things out. I was exceeding expectations. It was just a different client. It was yeah. just a different ex- expectation. I was working for property managers and working for, you know, facility managers. Yep. But it's the same thing. People are going to buy services, and I was just good at exceeding expectations yeah. and delivering. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so what happens is when you when you do that, people want to trust you with more That's work. Right. And Correct. so once. You're trusted with more work. You start to grow in your credibility within the organization you yep. work for. That's right. And even though there were only five people working yeah. at Pacific Modular, yeah. all of a sudden this young buck starts to have influence because he's delivering results. Yeah. Yep. And I'm just delivering results within the small little um, world. And guess what? It's for the first time in a long time I'm doing life without fear. 
mm. doing life without wow. need. No, I still had a, a, a desire for approval. Yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? But yeah. there's a difference yeah. between a desire for approval and a need for approval. Mm. Okay. Yep. And so I, I'm producing and it's working and it's flowing. And all of a sudden I have some reputability with Bill Busey. Yep. So when I present, Hey, I understand you guys have been desiring to start a branch in Portland. Um, he's like all about it. Yeah. And so sure enough, they send me down to mm. Portland. But before we get there, I, I started this little company yeah. down in Portland. Yep. Pacific modular JD. It just blew up. Like I felt like, like God was just on it, on it. Like it was really yeah. blowing up. I remember going to a men's conference. Yeah. Now, when you think of men's conference, you're thinking like emerge, right? Where men are. That's men. all. That's the only context uh, I have. Now. You're so lucky. I know that the only know. context for church you the have, the only one I have, is awake. Is awake. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. I've had God's had to do more work to unchurch me. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. there's a whole lot of expressions yeah. of Christianity. Yeah. That are weak. That are weak. And I can't handle. Lame. But I had to walk through some of those yeah. so I could yeah. be a part of yeah. some of this. Yeah. But it it wasn't a rugged, like, all men battlefield. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Where yeah. testosterone was yeah. celebrated. Celebrate. They locked us yeah. into a air-conditioned room and made us feel guilty for oh. liking boobs. You know? It's like, uh, come on, I'm a man, dude. Yeah, I was on. wired for this. Yeah. I'm just supposed to like the right set, you know, the yeah, right the pair. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, but I still remember even in the middle of that environment, JD, God still speaks yeah. even in yeah. imperfect environment. Yeah. And he gave me one word, Intel, Intel. And I was in Portland. Yeah. So guess what? Big major company is in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Intel. Yeah. The Intel yeah. corporation. Intel. And I knew coming out of that, men's conference that I needed to go chase that client. No and kidding. I remember yeah. within one year, I remember it was one year later, we had been awarded the single largest um, account in mm. the, in like PacMod was a part yeah. of the franchise. Yeah. We had the largest um, single client in the nation. We were the fastest growing franchise in the nation. Yeah, yeah. And I remember they were trying to fly us back to Orlando, Florida for uh, the awards. But I said, I can't go because it's our men's retreat. And I know the genesis of all this success yeah, yeah. was at that men's retreat. Nope. Yeah. And so I'll still remember wow. like some of those days, yeah, yeah. even even before like things were like like this yeah, I yeah, still yeah. remember some of those early days where I was first learning to hear God's voice yeah. for the first time yeah <sighs> love it love it okay all keep right going so, you can keep digging man okay so you got so you got the uh in Portland where how did that okay. end up okay okay so now this is where things yeah go from good to bad Okay, give it to me. Are you sure? I mean, yeah. So, uh, sum it up quick. Like, okay, what, give it to me. All right, because we're we're on a high right now. Okay, like well, this is, you're 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 killing it. Here. I, you're okay, crushing good. the game. And we're not even at you're, convergence yet. You get ready when we get into the. We're gonna the, we're gonna say we're gonna get into con convergence here. Convergence okay. soon. So, the problem is, and and this is really a big reason why yeah. we started Pathfinders, yeah. and big yeah. reason why. Yeah. Like, if you really want to know, sometimes. Your passion flows out of pain. Mm. Something you went through yep. that that either injured you, frustrated you, or stole life from you. Yep. And you are on a mission to make sure it doesn't steal life from anybody else. Right. Okay. And so in Portland, we started attending a church. And yep. we started working with youth. And I love youth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my first job we took at... Uh, Evergreen Christian Center was a junior high youth pastor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But before that, we used to go to these camps. And this is critical. This part of yeah, the, as yeah. we start to transition, this is yeah. the part yeah. where you really, listeners really want to capture this yeah. story yeah. because this is really the, the, the beginning of why we do what we do, yes. why you went through yeah. a powerful, transformational uh, Pathfinders yeah. mastermind it's coming out of this experience yep. right here. Yep. So we started serving. We'd go to these youth camps, JD. Yep. And these youth camps 
were powerful. Okay. And so there was three nights, always three nights. I yep. probably went six years in a row. Right. Okay. Yep. First night, if you brought a friend or you're here, you know, and we're leaders, but yeah. this is what yeah. the speaker would say. Yeah. And you don't know Christ. You need to come to the front. Mm. Okay. And it was always powerful. Yeah. Next yeah. night. This is this was like a, a Holy Spirit church, charismatic church. They'd want to get you yeah. filled with the spirit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they were pretty good at it. They'd like if you haven't, you know, spoken in tongues before. Yeah. And they were always they did say, you know, like yabba dabba do or yeah. ride a Honda, you know, yeah. whatever yeah. happened. But it was usually very potent, very powerful. Yeah. But what happens is you start to see behind the curtain and you start to see the system and that it's always working the same way. And although there's authentic things happening yeah. there, you're just starting to get to know it's more than an experience. It's all designed. OK. Right. And and it, it was it wasn't bad. OK. Right. Yep. But you're just starting to learn the system a little bit. Yes. But the third night, this is what got me, and this is what injured me, mm. and then this is what derailed my life. No kidding. No kidding. Was they said, who in here feels called to be a pastor or to be a missionary or to be somebody who's in ministry? Yeah. Yep. And that was the only thing they offered was mm. pastoral work, wow. ministry work, missionary work in fact usually the higher the call was the more you didn't want to do it no if it kidding. was a missionary call yeah. to some place in the world yeah. that you yeah. never wanted to go to that's probably the thing god was most pleased with jd mm. and so we, we what we started to see is me at 23 years old encountering god in hawaii i saw the real thing the authentic god who's yeah. potent yeah powerful yep. Yep. But now I'm being presented him through religion and it's starting to skew who he really is and what he's really like mm. and what his nature's really like. Yeah. The fact that he's a masterful engineer who yeah. created and, and wired me a certain way to work a certain way. Yep. And now religion is skewing that and trying to get me to fit into a round hole or trying to get me into yeah. a yeah. certain way that the only way that I can pursue the high calling is through three channels. That's it. That's it. Mm. So what do you do when you've been marked by God? Yep. You feel like, you, you know, you start to know people and yeah. you realize, man, my experience is a little different than everybody else's. What yeah. do you do? Yeah. And, and then you're presented with the only options you know yeah. are these three options. Well, what do you do? Don't you have to eventually just assume, well, then I guess I need to do one of those. Right. Yeah. So I quit my job. Ooh. Yeah. Which there was great life on it. Yeah. And I, I just went into ministry, started doing junior high ministry. It was great. Mm. Not, it's not like I sucked at you it. You couldn't keep your job and do it. Nah, that wasn't holy enough. Oh, really? I mean, come on. I mean, did you ask them, Hey, can I continue to work? And nah, do this? I no, did, I didn't. I mean, you it didn't. wasn't like it is like, you got to realize well, you're, what you're a part of here at Awaken is so fresh. It's so right. It's, it's insane. It's not perfect. We're still figuring things out. Yeah, We're human, yeah, yeah. but it's designed yeah. to where, you know, it's just so less religion and so much yeah. more true and authentic. Be exactly. the real you. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're like, you don't, you need to go go into work. Yeah. Don't yeah. come out yeah, of go. work. But, but back in that day yeah. and it wasn't just where I was, it was a big part of like the religious kind yeah. of community. Yep. If you really loved God, you were going to do holy things. Mm. Yeah. And so I did and I quit and I religion, yeah. religion and not giving me an authentic Avenue to serve God in wow. my wiring and your wiring. Yeah. In my wiring. And then also not addressing the issues of confidence that hadn't been fixed. Yeah. Just because I was loved by God doesn't mean I had fixed the broken wiring that needed approval and had so much insecurity that hadn't yet been fixed. And yeah. so I'm going into all kinds of endeavors, um, with broken, mm. with, with broken engineering. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dude, this is so good. Are you sure? So, this so is so good. Yeah. So you're drawing out good. some stuff here, man. Because look at what if we didn't talk about this? Because yeah. this is this ties it all in to how you got to where you are now. Yeah, and got to our yeah. main topic, convergence. Yep. So, so yeah, give it to me. How long did you do the ministry? How long was it? To, give me give me your low point. Give me the low point. Wow. 
Okay. Give me the low so, point where you're great, like, oh great, boy. Great, great, So it was a great church. There was yep. exciting things. Yep. A lot of, lot of good things happening. Okay. The low point was um, I headed back to where I was from originally. Yep. Washington State. Yep. Got planted in a little small church there. Yep. Um, moved in with my mom. So now I'm 31 years old. Living on my mom's couch. No money. Divorced. And that's where the convergence story begins. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at my guys over here. The, the convergence story. All right, so let's get into it. You want to get into it? Let's get into it. Okay. Give it to me. So, uh, to, by the way, define convergence. Oh, man. Because I remember when I first met you yeah. guys, everybody was talking, hey, those are your convergence. This is your convergence yeah, thing, yeah, J.D. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. What, what is great, this? Great, great. Convergence is you and I mm -hmm. living the most authentic version of ourselves. I love that. Running in the lane we were created to run in. <laughs> Alongside the people we're supposed to do life with. People that you and I make better. Yep. People that make us better. Number four, with the tools we need. Yep the tools that you know streamline our world and our work and then number five all of those things done in the power of god that there is a divine power i met it mm -hmm. when i was 23 years old yep. in hawaii i just didn't realize it was for purpose that there's divine power not for me to just say wow yeah. this is better than ecstasy yeah but so that i can do the things that god's put in my heart yep. to get done there's big battles out there yeah. that need to be fought. There's big territory that needs to be taken. And some of that territory will never be taken without divine power. And mm. so convergence is those four components married to that fifth component that gets the job done. Wow. All I right, know. bro. I'm I glad know. that I asked you to, to define that because I didn't know. Now I know. Yeah. But I'm sure a lot of listeners and watchers have no idea. Well. All convergence right, is probably um, next to confidence. I'd say, yeah, yeah. I'd say the the rewiring of my life mm. is a is a rewiring in confidence. And and I'll tell you, if there's anything that got me um, onto my mom's couch, yeah, divorced at 31 years old, it was a lack of confidence. No kidding. Nothing else has changed in me. No, I'm not smarter. I didn't read a different book. I didn't go through something. I've been rebuilt with the same wiring, but my confidence connections um, have been fixed. And and I'm going to tell you, you know, I, you like to eat. Of course. You had some nice bison today I did. for lunch. Yeah, right? white wifey. Oh, come on, taking good bison. care of you. Uh, Do you I'm like a blessed. good steak? Do I okay. like a good steak? What's your favorite, favorite seasoning? for a good steak you know what i actually don't even know huh. all i know is i love wagyu steak oh my that's gosh. all i know yeah yeah filet yeah. mignon wagyu i'm on a wagyu holy cow. kick all over san diego so the for, quite frankly Healthy i don't even know the meat. seasoning maybe but, just a butter but, maybe just some it was blue cheese is oh, that is that a yeah, seasoning yeah, that's a seasoning okay you like a little right. blue i love blue cheese i'll tell you the greatest the greatest seasoning for any steak yeah. you know what it is what hunger Hunger. <laughs> you know what I've discovered about confidence? Yeah. yeah. Confidence is what makes any man, any woman taste good. <laughs> and no matter how you're packaged, yeah. no matter how you're seasoned, if you lack confidence. Mm. And so my journey was 30 years of my life train wrecked by a lack of confidence. Even with God in my life, he yep. began to yeah. reveal that he yeah. was the source of it. Right. But I needed to get connected to some people that could reconnect some of my broken pieces, yep. broken wiring, yep. broken functioning. Yep. You know, because yep. I wasn't created to be dysfunctional. Right. Right. Come on. I'm created in the image of God, yep. J.D. Exactly. Created to be functional. Yep. To work. To produce. I'm not wired to be unproductive, right? but here I am, 31 years old, living on my mom's couch, and nothing's working. That's a problem. It's a problem. 
And that's where I was. Mm-hmm. Wow. So do we have enough of the low points? Can we start? To, yes. Can we start to go up Hit from me. here? Hit me. Okay, so the great news is... Can we is, go up from here? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can go any. I've dragged enough out of you. Yeah, okay. you're, you're off the hook now. All right. You've given me four or five things yeah. that you weren't going to share. That's enough. Yeah, and what's really important, J.D., <laughs> is I think a lot of times we just had um, um, the great John Madden yeah, pass I know. away. Right. I read a great quote from him. Um, sorry that I, I don't have it in front of me, yeah, but he yeah. talked about there is no... No highlight reel, no, no high point, no pinnacle in life without the sewer. Mm. And I've discovered all those sewer lines that I just walked yeah, us through, yeah, all yeah. those deep places yeah, that yeah. were difficult, that were yeah. painful, that were embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. That you didn't bring me on your show because of my sewage. Yeah, yeah. You brought me on your show because there's productivity, there's health, yeah. there's life, yeah. there's impact, there's potency. Yep. There's something on my life today that's attractive. Yep. But what I've yep. discovered is so much of that was was um, it, it was imperative that I go through those sewage points, that I went through those low points to learn and, and to to come through. And, and a lot of my convergence story has a lot to do with with. Um, those broken places yep, and those exactly. broken pieces. Yep, yep. And so let's talk with the first one. Yep. The first one is being the most authentic, authentic. Yep. version of yourself. Yep. The real you, yep. the way you're designed. And, and I found like a confident Colin is, is, is hard to stop. And yep. I'm five, nine. I'm, yeah. I'm a pretty sexy five, nine guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you want to know what attracts a beautiful wife like Melissa my confidence. wife and I, we've been married for 17 yeah, years yeah, now. Yeah. It's confidence, confidence. Man. Do you want to know what's attractive when you're doing business with people? It's looking them in the eye yeah, and they can yeah. see that you're genuine. Absolutely. And I just yeah. love that I don't have to fake it anymore. I right. spent my whole life on a stage yeah. performing for you to like me. Yeah. You know how liberating it is Ugh. to be free from the need? Yeah. Again, I still want you to like me. Exactly. Come on. I but mean, I'm don't. a human. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going to sell myself anymore yeah. for you to like me. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't like the goods I have, I'm not saying I can't improve them, yeah. but I, yeah. I'm just saying I'm enough. Like, yeah. And, and that's, that's the beginning of convergence yeah. is me being an authentic me. And an authentic me is there's things I love. There's so many dynamics about being authentic. Like, yeah. Do you like living in the, in the desert? Do you like living by the, by the water? Do you yeah. like the mountains? I mean, there's so many light and not all of it's like super spiritual. Yeah, Some of it's right. just, what are you wired to be? Yeah. What do you like? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yep. And, and what's sad is how few people actually will ever even get to this point. Yeah. And what's the reason for that? What, why? Wow. W- would you say most people don't reach this level? Big time. Most people are not an original. They feel like their yep. only definition of success is being like somebody else. Right. So they identify people who they or we or society deems as successful. Yep. And then we try to emulate or model their life. And, and we want to be just like this person. Right. Okay. Yep. And, yep. and what I've discovered is I can be inspired by somebody like the real deal, yep. JD. Dang. And you are an inspiring guy. I, I, but, appreciate that. But you don't intimidate me because yeah. you only inspire me to be more me. Yeah. And what I discovered is as long as I'm inspired to be authentic, then it's good to have heroes. But if I have people yeah. that inspire me to be like them, yeah. well, that's yeah. da- that's endangering actually because there's no way I can be you. Right. Or you me. Yeah. You know. Yep. And so I feel like you know, personally, my journey has been a discovery that, man, I, I'm actually pretty special as long as I'm authentic. As long as you're authentic. Yeah. And I'll give you a couple examples. Yeah. Give like, me some examples on how you made this transition. Okay. Um, there's a couple of tests out there that are really important, I think. Okay. okay. Number one is yeah. it's called Strength Finders 2.0. Yep. Okay. Where you do, have you, you've done Strength Finders. Yep. Right? I did well, Pathfinders. Pathfinders. Yep. You remember any of your strengths? Um, Gosh. Uh, well, I, I can go through mine and yeah, you think yeah, about yours. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, b- Strength Finders yeah. was very, very huge for me. Yeah. 
because it was the first time I had a test in front of me that showed me what I was good at. Yep. The first thing, number one, competitive. Mm. Now, I was always taught that I was too competitive for my own good and I needed to tone it down. Yeah. But what I love about convergence is you don't tone down who you really are. Yeah. You tune it. Mm. You get the tuning right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. But then you turn up who you are. Yep. You amplify who you really are. If you can get your tuning right and you're playing the right chord or the right, you know, yep. then that's what needs to be played. And for me, being competitive is potent and strategic. Yeah. You see yeah. what I mean? Yo, so, yeah. Yeah. so part of like, um, convergence is discovering JD. Yep. Like how am I wired? Totally. And then falling in love with my wiring. Yep. Not because I'm self consumed, but because the best version of me is authentic. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 So that was a huge part. And then the second part, um, these are the two yeah. things yeah. in my opinion yep. that shaped my authenticity was I went through some freedom coaching where I began to break contract with old paradigms mm. of rejection. Mm. So it wasn't enough for me to just renew my mind. Yeah. I had yeah. broken connections with rejection and with the need for approval that needed to be, um, I had contracts that needed to be broken. And so for me, a big part of my journey, and it was when I was at the lowest point. Sometimes when you're in yeah. the lowest point, yeah. you're really teachable. Yep, totally. Yeah. And I was pretty teachable yeah. when I was 31 years old, yep. having just gone through a divorce. I was pretty open to coaching. Yep. And so Pastor Dwayne Wolf ran a program called Restored Life. Mm. And I swear he decided that I was going to be his prototype. I was going to be his billboard yeah. of yeah. what restoration yeah. looked like. No kidding. And he began to just take me through it. The next great man I wanted to be like yeah. Yeah. was Dwayne Wolf. Dwayne. He didn't throw me away. Yeah. He was a pastor yep. who had to, in his church, had a divorced pastor. And he said, you're mm. 31 years old. God's mm. not done with you. Yeah. I'm not convinced you need to be a pastor. Yeah. Let's see what God has for you. Yeah. I just think there's value in you. And that's what I love about religion will sentence you for yep. a crime right. you committed. Yep. But true Christianity will restore you into what you were created to be. And this guy yep. began to work on me and restore me. Yeah. And he took me through a series where I had to go back through my history, J.D. Yep. Go back through yep. like yep. some of the things I was embarrassed by, some yep. of the traumatic events that happened in my life, some of the things my mom brought to the table, mm. some of the things my dad brought yeah. to the table that walked in them but were running in me. You know what I mean? Yep. Oh, I yeah. saw my mom do it. Now I enforce it. And now I have to break contract with something I've been doing for three decades yep. so that I cannot do it anymore and start to be who I really am. And that process, J.D., that's a whole nother podcast. Crazy. Probably the freedom podcast is yes. probably one we need to do here yep. one of these yeah. times. Yep. But that was a big component, yep. J.D. Yeah, I was yep. just getting free, breaking contract with old mindsets and things that used to govern me. And see, a lot of us, if you really mm. want to get into people's brain and get yeah. into people's thoughts, yep. is it's not wrong with having um, bad thoughts. Yep. It's when those thoughts govern us. Mm. All of us have crazy thoughts. Of course. It's when crazy thoughts govern you or crazy thoughts convince you that they're you. Mm. And so you got mom's voice or dad's yeah. voice, yeah. Yeah. you know, that is repeating in your head and now it's become your voice and you begin to think it's you that's crazy or you that hates people or you that's insecure and yep. and when you start to break contract with those things jd yep. all of a sudden yep. you enter into contract with new thinking right yep. thinking healthy thinking no, yep. i'm confident that's yep. not what confident people do yeah. so that was a massive component for yeah. me in convergence jd and that's like phase one you're saying phase one phase one foundational foundational yeah and, you know, it's interesting because phase one, I still remember this story. And I might have shared this with you, J.D., when I was um, sharing th through some of the PFA stuff, is the one thing that my mom had that every house I've lived in since had when I was 31 years old, yeah. living on her couch, she had a mirror. She had a mirror in her bathroom. Mm. 
And I remember at 31 years old, the first time I ever liked what I saw in that mirror Mm. was at 31. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Right off the backside of one of the most embarrassing things I'd ever gone through. But because what was happening is, is my outside performance no longer was dictating my value. Yeah. But my right programming, getting back to the authentic person I was, was dictating my value system. And then I began to look and like and trust who I was because my wiring was getting fixed and I was learning to celebrate the things that I was pre-wired to do. Mm. Compete, strategy, things like that that are are inherent in me. You take me away from them. I'm average. You put me in them. I'm special. Those kind of things. Yep. And so that's where it began. And then there's foundations. It's not like you have to get one right and then find your your lane yeah, yeah. and you know it's it's like you go here and then you're here and sometimes sometimes running in your lane is really what yeah. allows the authentic you right you know what i mean but that was foundational that i remember yeah. like thinking man of all the times for me to like myself this is probably not the the most uh the the time that you would think yeah you know yeah it was right after the biggest failure or what looked like or felt like the biggest failure in my life. Yeah. And somehow I'm falling in love with who I am mm. because my wirings got fixed. Interesting. Isn't that? And, and the, the strength finder thing, what I kind of, when I took it in the pathfinders, what the, the, for me, the most profound thing I got yeah. out of that was the things that maybe were seen as maybe a negative about me. Yeah. Like you, you said about competitive, might yeah. have been like, but we, you can actually enhance that into a positive. Yeah. And Big realize, time. okay, that's me. That's me. It's who I am. Yeah. And you're an extra guy, Jay. That's how I'm wired. That's how I'm wired. No, no, not at all. That's one of the things I like about you is I feel like when I'm around JD, I'm, I don't care how extra you are. Yeah. <laughs> I care how authentic you are. Beautiful. And so I like how extra you are because it's you. Yeah. It's the real you. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why I even wanted to come yeah. on this show and why we become friends yeah. is, yeah. is is you probably intimidate yeah. or irritate yeah. a lot more people Absolutely. because they're, because you're a big presence and a big person. Yeah. But yeah. for me, I don't care how big a person yeah. is or small a person yeah. is. Yeah. I care about how authentic a person that's is. That's it. And when I see, I, I see beyond like the, the size yeah. and I see the genuineness. Yep. And, and that's what I, that's why we're friends. Yep. That's why we're going to maintain friends is because I can trust somebody who's authentic. And I'll tell you what, dude, the Pathfinder program and every, all your leaders, that's the, all they said from day one, hmm. day one, wow. they kept telling me, JD, all we want is you, you. Cause I was like, well, what do I do here? What do I do? JD, yeah. we just want you to be your authentic self. Yeah. Be J- bring JD to the Pathfinder program. There you that's go. all we want. Is, yes. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. Cause I'm a little bit out. I'm a little bit, bit extra. I'm uh-huh. a little out there. Yep. Are you JD? We want you. You. And you guys kept telling me that. Yeah. And I've never had anybody mm. hard, like tell me that. And it, and then you believed in me and you not only believed in me, but you loved yeah. me, you, my authentic me. You. Everyone yeah. loves it. Yeah. And is celebrating it yeah. and rooting. It. It's, yeah. it's insane. So keep going. So that, so I'm picking up on this. Yeah. You're and, pick, and, well, and, and you've been living through this program and this, 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 yeah. this, this, this ideology. Absolutely. Okay. Which brings us back to, even though this ideology or yeah. this, this way of thinking and living yeah. that your authentic self is what we want. Right. You're never going to listen to me yeah. if I'm not winning. <laughs> right back to it. You don't give a rip. Yeah. Unless there's fruit attached, unless there's results attached, unless there's winning, unless there's millions of dollars a year in revenue. Listen, part of the reason we're pushing the limits on our revenue and on our size of our company is not because we need more stuff. Yeah. It's because we want to impact more lives. Yes. Yep. And JD's a big life that's only going to be impacted by a big life. Yep. And that's what we're after. That's why we got to keep pushing the boundaries, man. Yeah. That's why this real deal radio needs to blow up. Yeah. Blow up. Because you're real. (laughs) I love you too. You're just insane. (laughs) I mean it too. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. And at every level, you're going to have to look in a mirror and like who you are. Let me harp on that. I mean, that's, that's the most important thing right there. Yeah. Is loving who's in the mirror. Yep. 
in in so many people and the mm. percentage is sadly yeah i think 90 plus personally yeah. percent of people don't yeah. love who's in the mirror yep. would you agree with that i would agree completely i didn't think about that think yeah. about that how wonderful is life hmm. life is beautiful yeah life is amazing yeah but you know what everybody's making it not amazing everybody's stressing yeah. out yeah we're invent we're inventing stress and we're, we don't love the person who we really are yeah so anyway it's sad. You're on it i mean you see what what's going on here is we're we're uncovering the like we talked about the fundamental problem yeah with culture is self-orientation self-orientation and now we're talking about the fundamental breakdown of yep. why is because of the way we see ourselves yep. and, and listen vision is not yeah what you see yep it's the lenses you see through and if your lenses it doesn't matter how extraordinary what's in front of you yeah. if your yeah. perception is that i am not worthy of it or i have no way to get it yep you know because whether you believe you have access to it or you don't you're right yeah right. your belief system your lenses your lenses determine yep. what you see and what you know and how you perceive and we have a huge lens problem yeah and the biggest the biggest lens adjustment for me yeah. was rejection. No kidding. Oh, big time. Now, rejection takes so many different forms. Yeah. For me, it was performance-based approval. I'm not, I don't need to keep yeah. reiterating yeah. and yeah. beating this drum. Yeah. But once I had my lenses changed, okay, yep. the way I saw myself in the mirror, yep. we're back to yep. the mirror, yep. wasn't through a lens of rejection. Mm. It was through a lens of value. A lens of value. And so authentic self. Yep. Big time. Okay. Phase two. Running in the lane <laughs> you were created to run in. So now this brings us back to that chapter yeah. of what religion did yeah. to the call of God, to the word vocation. Yeah. The word vocation means called out. Yep. That means somebody called me into something. Yep. You know, did you ever see the movie Chariots of Fire? Oh, yeah. Of Don't course. you love that movie? Loved it. Eric Liddell. Yeah. <laughs> Again, born into a religious yep. Christian family. Yep. They were missionaries. There was pressure on Eric to go into the mission field. You know, right. they were all missionaries yeah. in China. Okay. Yep. And his sister used to say, you have a purpose on your life, Eric. And he'd say this. Yeah. God made me mm -hmm. with a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Mm. You see, track, athletics, wasn't a lane that was offered to me. Yeah. When I was passionate about God, very vulnerable to be p put into the right pathway. Remember, when I was back serving in that church before yep. I became a youth ministry and I was at those camps, there was no pastor at the time saying, hey, is there anybody here? Who feels like you're an athlete? Yeah. Who feels like right. like Drew yeah. Brees? Remember yeah. Drew Brees, yeah. 16 years old. Yep. Some pastor comes up and says, "God's looking for a few good men." Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he knew the lightning bolt hit him. Yeah. He thought he had to lay his football down and pick up a Bible, or pick up a missionary plan. Yep. And God says, "I'm looking for a few good men who will pick up a football for me." So you know. Here he is responding yep. at 16 years old to the call of God. But see, for me, and this is why we have Pathfinder, yeah. that wasn't an option for yeah. me. Yep. Uh, if he would have said, mm. God's looking for a businessman, I wouldn't have had to go on a journey right. like yeah. I had to yeah. go on. Yeah. Yeah. If he would have said, the high call is whatever you're called to. Right. And so this running in your lane is everything. It's, it's everything. Figuring out that you're actually, you have pe bents and passions and desires and dreams to do things um, that are fit with your unique wiring and that whatever God calls you to is the high call. In fact, it's not what you do yeah. for God. Yep. Okay. It's how you do it. Yep. And who you do it for. That's what makes something yep. special. Absolutely. That's what makes something holy. That's a kind of a unique word. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tr try not to throw around a bunch of religious vernacular because I really yeah. don't like religious vernacular. Right. Yeah. But holy is something that's set apart, 
Yep. And so if I'm going to build a business, I can set apart my business yep. to benefit others and to glorify God. That's, that's what it means. But it yep. just so happens that the best way for me to do something special, something holy, something unique, something uncommon yep. is to do what I'm wired to do, what I love to do, what, what I'm gifted and engineered to do for him. Yep. And now how does one know the lane? How do you find out the lane? Well, I mean, there's a lot to that. But again, it's not all super spiritual stuff. Right. What are you good at? What are you good at? What do you love to do? What do you what keeps you up at night for the right reasons? Yep. What do you do when you spend three hours doing it? You leave like it was only three minutes. How right. did the time get away from us? Yep. You like, right like now this, like this podcast. This podcast. <laughs> you are gonna leave like now, you know. Hopefully all of us here are feeling the same level of convergence around what we're doing, yeah. but it's not just, let's say the podcast. Okay. Yeah. But you, you had somebody, Caleb, who was a, a powerful, um, f- film editor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His convergence, his lane is editing. Like, like mm. he feels alive when yeah. he's not just good at it. And I would say this. Yeah. If you're not good at it, yeah. it's probably not your lane. It's probably. <laughs> if you suck at it and yeah. people don't want more of it, yeah. figure out what you don't suck at. Yeah. But, In <laughs> fact, it's not even enough to not suck. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's there has to be something that you and I are special at. Yeah. Figure it out. Figure it out. Now I got four kids. They're all completely different. Yep. Okay. Uh, my daughter wants to be a defense attorney. Yeah. She's 11. Okay. She's 11. But what if I had a religious like process for her? Oh, sweetheart. The only thing you can do that will ever please God is to be a missionary or a pastor or a pastor. I'm so disappointed that you want to be a defense attorney. But see, this is, this is how what religion can do yeah. is it's, it takes the color out of Michelangelo's painting and yeah. it makes it, we think it's black and white and God, God is a colorful. He, he does everything in yeah. vibrance. Yeah. He's extra. Yeah. JD. He's extra. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And so, yeah, he is. <laughs> so I think part of it is, is discovering the lane being like the big thing. And so yeah. we, we talk about the, the five major pillars of culture that we feel called to at Pathfinder. Yes. We talk about one of the lanes is, Politics, Pol- okay. government, yep. okay, yep. military. Our son is a United States Marine. Yep. Yep. He's never felt more alive mm. running in the intel community yeah. of the Marine Corps. And sometimes running in your lane will draw out your engineering. Mm. Your, your authentic self is the way you're wired, the way yep. you're engineered. Yep. Sometimes the road you're on will pull the engineering out of you. You heard of my story of driving that Can-Am, right? Yeah. In Baja, Mexico. Yep. And so you're in this Mexico on these crazy hills overlooking the beautiful ocean and you're climbing rocks. And this this vehicle is designed, engineered to go fast and to take a beating. Yep. Now, my favorite. What's your favorite car? Favorite car? um, I'm going to say at this point, probably a Bentley. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Now, a Bentley is probably 10 times the price. Mm Mm-hmm. Of these can amps. Yeah. Okay. But which ones do you think is going to perform better in Baja? The, yeah. The the can can amp. Yeah. Okay. Why? It's engineered engineered. for a certain road. Right. And the road, okay, the lane, the car is on, draws the engineering out of it. Yep. And so one of the things I love about discovering the authentic version of myself is if I find my lane, my lane will actually pull out of me the thing that's in me that's designed to be on that lane. Mm. It's powerful. Yes. And so imagine, though. Okay, so let's just get back to the creator, okay, who turned me on when I was 23 and opened my eyes, okay, not not just to the fact that I was self-oriented, but he opened my eyes to that he was big and powerful and had engineered me to work. Even though I wasn't working yet, right. I could see that there was a whole lot more going on back then. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just look at this guy who engineered the Can-Am. 
Okay, I don't know yep. his name. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Or let's say Elon Musk. He's yeah. kind of in the news right now. Oh yeah. I like Elon. Yeah, big time. He's a big disruptor. I'm he so is. grateful that the wealthiest man on the planet right now yeah. is not just another token Ugh. tech guy. Yeah. Just just blasting the same rhetoric. Yeah. I love the fact that he pushing back. He is. Things. He is. Yeah. I told my my wife today. We we don't have a Tesla, and here's why. Yeah. I'm an original. There's too many Teslas out there. Yeah, yeah. I like cars that no one else has. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I like things that no one else has. But today, as I'm just watching the world, I'm like, I'm buying a Tesla. Not because yeah. uh, because yeah. I want to get behind yes. is somebody who's disrupting the status quo. Yep. You tracking with me? Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. let's just say, you know, the thing I like about Elon Musk is he engineers yeah. these cars to go freaking fast fast like accelerate beyond anything we've ever beyond seen beyond fathomability it's yeah. insane they're making like yeah. the engineers at ferrari pee their pants yeah. because it's like how is this hundred thousand dollar car yeah going zero to 60 in 1.9 without seconds. gas yeah without gas yeah but what i love is he keeps pushing the yeah. envelope and the oh, new yeah. plaid just came out recently yeah. you know yeah. i guess it's one nine now the plaid okay yeah and um but imagine no so just let's just get back to yeah your engineer yep who wired you to be an authentic vehicle yep. and get on the lane, get in, get on the track. Mm -hmm. So that's just, let's just look at it through that lens. Yep. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. It's good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Keep going. Um, he says, and, and you and I get in the car and we take that Tesla yep. to Baja. Yep. Now I don't care how fast that car is. It's not designed to be on the wrong road. Right. There is a road that works perfectly for that vehicle. Yep. That brings the acceleration. So that's one of the things that's dangerous is when you and I find our wiring, but then we try to fit it into the mm. wrong road or the wrong gifting or the wrong you tracking with yeah, me. Yeah, the wrong yeah, lane. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's frustrating though is this thing's designed to go fast. What if I get in it and I just like mm. barely touch the gas? Yeah. Never push the boundaries on that engineering. Yeah. You and I. Yeah. JD, man. God wired us to be like ridiculous. Yeah. Powerful yeah. people. Yeah. Engineered. Right. To do great things. Yeah. And when no, when we're not pushing the boundaries yeah. of who we are and yep. how we're engineered, yep. it's not just you and I that's frustrated. It's the engineer of our life, of the world. 100%. That has wired us. Yep. And I, I, you might have heard me share this story, but I'd love to share it with your listeners yes. about the white key and the, the green key. Yeah, yeah. And our friend, I have a friend named Manuel who was down in Baja with us, and he got stuck with the wrong key. Yeah. And so the white key is the performance key that brings the best out of these, like, Can-Ams, yeah. man, yeah. and yeah. makes them just, just, just turn on. Yeah. And you're hitting these roads, yeah. like like a, a madman and these these cars will not leave the road they're they're wildly um yeah. powerful yeah so we get on the road and uh um manuel is stuck with the green key and it it won't allow this vehicle to go fast it yeah. only goes like 30 miles an hour yeah. so we're all flying at 80 90 miles an hour over these crazy roads and he's like what's what's wrong with this key you know yeah or what's wrong with my he, what happens when you have the wrong key is yeah. you think there's something wrong with the vehicle right and this is what i've discovered about like these lanes is when yeah. is when you don't when you haven't turned on the engine yeah you underperform and it's very frustrating to live a life where you're not performing at optimum levels and yeah and so yeah. i just think yeah. these are the two things these lanes yep. bring out the engineering okay and then mm -hmm. the engineering needs to be turned on fully yep to seize the lane Otherwise, it's just, you know, you, like you said, we're letting down the, the creator uh, or the engineer, mm -hmm. but we're also letting yeah. down everybody in our life yeah. that could potentially benefit wow. by us turning up the, the engine yeah. Yeah. and pushing yeah. our vehicle right. as far as we can go. Yeah. Right? Golden. Well, let's think about real deal. Yeah. Let's just talk about this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you're engineered to do it. Yeah. You needed to get into a program and a system and around a God who yeah. wired you and yeah. pre-engineered you to do it. Yeah. The reason you want to do it is, number one, you love it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. Let's just not. Let's yeah. just be real. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to yeah. do this. No. You're successful. Yeah. 
you guys are killing it, right? Setting records. Yeah. This is an outworking yeah. of something you were originally wired to do. Correct. Something that's yeah. in you. Yes. Something you're passionate yeah. Yeah. about. Yeah. But who's waiting for this thing to have a million listeners? Yeah. There are listeners out there that's like yeah. hungry for yeah. what the the real, the authentic, yeah. the yeah. the transformational yeah. stuff yeah. that is JD yeah. and the guests you're bringing on here, yeah. especially this five nine ball guy with yeah. the divergence story. The, the sexy five nine. It, thank you. <laughs> But but you see, see convergence yeah. is is being responsible with my engineering, yep. my authentic wiring, and and being responsible to drive this vehicle to the limit on the road I've been assigned. <sighs> Come on, man. Yeah. Because there's yeah. people waiting. There's people yeah. on the other yeah. side, and this is our definition of prosperity. Yeah. It's not how many zeros are right. at the end of yeah. the check. Yeah. It's how many people are waiting for us to win big enough yep. to make a difference for them. Mm. Who's on the other side of winning since it's all about winning. Yeah. Who's waiting. Yeah. Who, if, who's affected if we don't win JD. Yeah. Think about it. What doors are we not opening for people that if we lived big yeah. and went all in. Okay. And, and brought the white key, the performance yeah. key to the table and got yeah. on the lane we were supposed to be on. Yep. Yeah. Whose lives are we going to unlock by winning? Yeah. And think think about the the, the every story that's told in this room. Hmm. Even if it's one person, two people, three that are going to hear your story or hear someone else's story. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to identify with that one person that's going to say, "You know what? Hmm. I'm going to step into my lane. I'm going to I'm going to turn up the engine. I'm yeah. going to put the white key in." Come on. I'm all in. Trade in the lame key. That to me, and I just got boot yeah. goosebumps everywhere. That to me is uh-huh. the mo- that's what drives me in this podcast. Because everybody's like, "Well, how are you going to monetize?" I'm like, "I'm not even worried about that." Come on, I'm doing this because I have a calling to serve others. That's it, and I can only say so much. Yeah, but when I bring in hundreds of guests that say even more than me, that have yeah. are winning even yeah. m- more than I am right now. Yeah, the voice they're going to have that I'm indirectly going to serve others by them listening to their story. Yeah. Come on. Come on, JD. That's what this is about. Yeah. That's what this is about. All right. So get into it here. You got the, okay. you've got the yeah. authentic self. You've got the lane. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Phase I'll, three. I'll just slam these, these other, yeah. these other, cause I think it's really important yeah. for us to understand. Yeah. So, so politics is a critical lane right now. Right. Yeah. In fact, in fact, yeah, it's probably the lane that takes the most stones mm. right now is mm. to be in politics. Wow. It takes courage. Yeah. Because if you want to buck the system. Yeah that's out there right yep. now, yep. it takes courage. Yep. That courage is the currency of the day. I believe one of the reasons you're at Awaken right now yeah. is because of its courage. Mm. Because it's the it's only organization, in, really, that doesn't surprise it's me. It's the number one. I shouldn't say that. Dr. Matt, obviously, yeah. there was a vibration over in his sure. chiropractic. I said, ooh, there's something going on here. You had him on yet? You got to get him on. No, he's on next week. Oh, he's a Sorry, two weeks. He is a champion. Two weeks he's on here. He is a champion. Oh, yeah, a champion. So, yeah. But when I saw on Instagram you guys defying the orders, yeah, come on, and showing real courage, courage, not shutting down, and yeah. they said not on our watch, not on our watch, worship is essential. Yep. I said, ooh, finally, a church that I've seen huh. walking the walk and yeah. not just talking the Interesting. talk. Interesting. That was it. That was it. And I said, okay, let's go check this church out. Mm. And then we saw the musical Twisted. <laughs> and it was signed, sealed, and delivered. It wow. was over at that point. It so was you're, done. You're one year into this thing. Exactly man. one year in. Holy cow. Exactly one year in. Yeah. So, yes, courage. courage. So talk to me about the... Courage is the currency. It's so the every current. one of these spheres... Yeah. Listen, this podcast, the yeah. Real Deal podcast, yeah. Yeah. is not for people that are going to fold like a deck chair yeah. Yeah. Um, when the to- when the going gets tough. Right. It's for people who, who recognize that it's tough out there, Yes. but they want to rise to the to the yep. to the task yep. okay politics is a massive space it's not a space i'm personally yeah called into right see and that's Me why either. it's important to know your lane yeah 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 because if you don't know your lane you'll think either there's something wrong with me right or i'll go give my best but i'm on the wrong road i'm a bentley in baja yeah that doesn't work right so either the road's wrong or the car's wrong neither one is wrong yeah they're just not fit for each other yeah Courage is the component that we all need, yep. but 
courage won't make a Bentley work in Baja. Mm. That's why you True. have to find your lane. And so, so politics is a critical lane, not necessarily my lane, yep. but, but some of the people that I'm closest to in this hour that yep. I love yep. the most, respect the most, and I feel have the most important calling yeah. are in this political space. Yeah. Yeah. The next is arts yep. and entertainment right. and sports, and sports yeah. athletics. Yeah. Yep. There's nothing more woke right now than athletics, and oh. it drives me crazy. And yet, there's nothing less woke than the athletic system mm. because you have to be the best of the best yeah. to play. Yep. And yet you're anyway, yeah. W- yeah. we don't need to get into that yeah. right now. It's a whole nother podcast, but I will say this, that if you want to influence people, one of the greatest ways to do it is through arts and entertainment mm. and athletics. Yep. And, uh, we'll have to go into this yeah. on another time so yeah. we can smash this out. Yeah. But yeah. being that we have a kid who's um, trying out, um, in January for the FC Austin MLS yeah. team yeah. at 14 wow. and the Real Salt Lake team. We've, it's been so fun being a parent yep. who gets to coach through the lens, parent through the lens of be whatever God has engineered you to be. Yep. And you'll know what, very quickly, no matter how much you love athletics, yeah. if you suck at them, <laughs> you're... <laughs> Yeah. You, you're yeah. tracking with me, right? Yes. Yeah. But if you genuinely have gifting and talent and you marry that yep. to hard work, the power of God, and courage, and courage, you will shine on whatever stage you're built for. Yep. The next is the media. So obviously, you have some media passion in you. Yeah. Because here we are mm-hmm. launching the Real Deal podcast. Yep. That's a media space. Yeah. See, that's a lane yeah. that is created for JD. Mm. JD was built. I didn't even think about that. I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah. Yeah. like it's it's going to bring things out of you. Yeah. And I'm just going to speak a couple of words right here yeah. that you're going to have things come out of you that you never even thought would be um, come through you yeah. and and thoughts and feelings, euphoric feelings, like where you're like, wow, I've never felt more alive mm. never felt more connected and that's part of the lane that you and i are supposed to be in and the media lane again it's yeah. not necessarily my lane yeah i don't feel like after leaving today yeah. i'm gonna go start my own podcast yes. but i'm inspired by you doing what you've been created to do so that i can do what i've been i'm just grateful there's lots of lanes yeah for me to go and use my engineering in. Mm. Track it. Yes. It's good. Yeah. This is good stuff right here. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So the next is um, education. Yep. Education is a huge lane. One of the industries that we will witness being the most disrupted in the next decade Mm. will be education. Education will be turned on its head, and there's massive opportunities in education. Guess what, though? Yeah. I'm not an educator. Right. So I want to inspire educators. Yes. I want to inspire the real deals. I yeah. want to inspire yeah. athletes. I'm not I'm none of those. Yeah. I'm I am just aware of the different lanes. Yep. Aware of the different lanes and pushing people to be their authentic selves in the lanes they were created to be in. But I meet people every day who have a bent and a passion to turn education on its head. Yes. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. They're then, in they're in they're in our group. They're in our group. Yeah. Unbelievable. And that's what Pathfinders is, is yeah. we don't say just if you're in business or yeah. want to be in business right, right. or want to be a, build a bigger business. We yeah. say, what are these things that are non-traditional? Yep. All the things that weren't, I wasn't able to go to the altar call for yep. that weren't missionary, pastor, or worshiply, all the things yep. that are non-traditional high callings. Yep. That's don't, don't think for a minute yep. that that's why. Pathfinders covers those five issues. Don't yeah. think it's because I spent a yeah. decade of my life chasing in the wrong lane, JD, yeah. Yeah. and it yeah. shipwrecked me and it brought the worst out of me. Wow. It didn't establish confidence. Yeah. It didn't, yeah. it didn't, it, it, I was a Bentley, maybe not a Bentley, right. maybe an Aston Martin. Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> but on the wrong road. Yeah. And no matter how well the vehicle's built, if it's on the wrong road, it will ruin it. It will ruin it. And and the danger is when we don't offer 
as Christians, as, as people yeah. that are yeah. calling people yep. and saying that God is calling people, yep. we don't offer real roads that celebrate their uniqueness and their yep. authenticity yep. and their engineering and give them real avenues to serve God. Yep. Then you're you're creating problems and you're yes. creating a yeah. lot of yeah. you're creating yeah. thirty year olds living yeah. on their couch, yeah. disappointed, having let people down that they care about, having let themselves down, trying to pick the pieces up. It makes total sense, total sense. And you know what? As much as I knew what Pathfinder's about and everything's about, now that you're spelling this out even more, yeah, because you've got these lanes. Yeah. And it's okay if you're not good at this, if you're oh, not yeah. good at that, if you don't love this. We've got five, five lanes. Yeah. Big time. Jump into one of them. Jump into one of them. What are you good at? What, what do you, you love? What are you good at? Yeah. What are you good at? Yeah. That's it. What do you love? What are you good at? Now, let me ask you this real quick. Yeah. What if, what if you're really good at something? Okay. But you don't love it? Wow, that's a great question. Like if you're a, just so an insane give football me, player, give me an baseball, example. football player, let's okay. say you're gifted, okay. you're... Right. touchdown maker okay. and your or, yeah. or whatever sport okay. your baseball player yeah. batting 400 incredible question here's the question and you're like okay this is my lane yeah. i'm really good at it why don't you love it mm. if you trace back why you don't love it it probably is rooted in something like well because my dad wanted this for me ah uh-uh. So he never let me choose. Yeah. It was always him wanting me. Yeah. So even like, let me just be straight with you about parenting. Like, yeah. And I've got some great books that if anybody, you know, calls yeah. in or is interested that, yeah. that I can recommend yeah. on parenting athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I read an extraordinary book called changing the game okay. on parenting, high performing athletes. Wow. And he talks through the biggest, Interesting. the biggest problem with kids that grow up hating the sport they started first loving. Number one, guess. Um, parents. Because their parents their parents just forced it on them. Yeah. Here's an eight year old, nine year old kid coming home from a baseball game. Okay? That he loves. He loves baseball. Yep. He struck out in his third at bat. He got a double, got a single, made a nice play in the field, struck out on his first at bat. Yeah. Gets in the car. He's nine he's not even thinking about baseball. He's Dad's thinking about pizza. Him. Dad's like, What happened? Why, why you, I told you to keep your head, you, you know, your eye on that ball, you yeah. know, you put, you, you turn your head, you know, whatever, you know, and, and, and the kid who wants approval all of a sudden mm. only gets approval when he performs well. Yeah. And so instead of him developing Yeesh. a love for the game, yeah. even though he's good at it because he's, he's become good at it for approval. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for a fear of not being approved of. So his motivation has gotten tainted along the way. And therefore, he can't figure out why, even though he's good at it, mm. he doesn't love it. And if you don't get to the root of why you've lost your love, yeah, you'll you'll burn out because because convergence doesn't work yeah. if you've lost your love. Yeah, and all of us lose our love. Yeah, it, it, listen, it, you have to be romantic. You have to be a passionate person. Yep, passion just means the price you're willing to pay for something. Yep. But you're not willing to pay a price for something you don't love. Mm. So if you've lost your love, you have to learn how to get romance, get the love back. And if you can't figure out the root of where the trauma, the injury, yeah. the twisting came in, yeah. you're tracking with yes. me. And and I think a lot of people who've lost their love can trace it back to, to a bad authority relationship, a bad boss, a mm. bad situation. Yep. A bad trauma. That I mean, that's a loaded question. Probably yeah. one of the best questions I've ever got, yeah. JD. Yeah. Because yeah. I wonder if there's a lot of people who wonder why. Yes. I just don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I have friends that run very successful businesses that tell me all the time, you know what? I I woke up and I just I was so unmotivated. I lost the motivation. I don't yeah. even know what to do with myself. I don't got wow. it in me anymore. Holy cow. Well, I, and I think if, if anybody thinks they're just going to find it doing something else, yeah. that's probably not the answer. There's probably a deeper dive yeah. that needs to take place. I will say this. Yeah. When you get to that place of burnout, yeah. it's very difficult to recover. Mm. We have to be smart and look for the signs. and the s- You can recover, yeah. but it's a deeper work, and it takes time. And it's dangerous to yeah. play with yeah. burnout. Yeah. It is. Because there's a lot of people that spent 20 years training to be a professional golfer. Yep that will never pick up a club again mm. because it brings back so many bad feelings. Yep. Burnout's dangerous. We got to we got to avoid burnout. Yep. And, and I'll tell you one thing is one thing is if you're, if you're chasing money, yeah. Oh. You you're, you're going to burn out. 
uh, if you're not chasing service and serving others, that's wow. you know component number one. I think. I think so too. Number one, yeah. there's got to be a bigger why reason a as to what why. you're doing, and and that, the 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 word why is it? Yeah. Why are you doing it? Yeah. You know, it's got to be deep. And I always say, if your why doesn't make you mm. cry, mm. you need a new one. Yeah. So yeah. okay. Now, we got to land this plane. Okay. We can do that. So so give me the. We've gotten to the authentic self. Um, we went to the lane, yeah. and I know we need to basically finish on who you're doing life with. Or oh we'll give it gosh. to me. H- give it to yeah. me. So okay. let's. So. so round this. Here's what we're gonna do because now we're in a we're in a society right now that is messed up. Yeah. And everybody's been pumped full of fear, fear, yeah. fear, 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 fear. Right. right. Yeah. More than ever. Yeah. Which is saying a lot. Yeah. Okay. What can we do right now? Bring this thing home. Mm. About doing it with the people because I think who we surround ourselves with. Yeah. Is everything in life big time okay big time how do we bring this thing down right now on the final thing of convergence and you tell me if you got a way to finish this and, and land it mm-hmm. with uh, doing it with the people that you're supposed to do it with mm-hmm. or why or doing it for you that make sense yeah so JD like you you and I have felt the dynamic of kind of a brotherhood yeah where you meet people that you're just in sync with yeah that bring you to life yeah that when you're around them you there's juice man. Yep. you connect yeah i think everyone on the planet is desperate to connect right at a deep level yeah and not just a level of highlight reels yeah and we live in a world where we're looking at everybody's highlight reel Correct. every day that's right but i like connections where i can share my editing room photos the stuff i'm never going to post yeah. the stuff i'm never going to share yeah the stuff that I deleted yep. and wish I could get it off of my file. <laughs> I, if I'm going to do life with people, if I'm going to live truly transparent, I need a Mark Herleman. I need a guy yeah. <laughs> that I said I was never going to do this again, but man, I looked at it or I, 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 I still am fragile. I'm still capable yep. of making mistakes and true authenticity is not just hanging out with a bunch of guys I'm winning with and yeah. flying on jets with and yeah. going to ball games with and, you know, and, and celebrating and popping champagne with, but I'm talking guys that I'm still crying with, still figuring stuff out with, still yeah. frustrated with, still yeah. overcoming. Yeah. Why am I lost my love? Yeah. Why, why am I struggling with my daughter? Why am I, mm. I mean, life is tough, man. Tough. And, and I found what I need is people in my life that I can have, I can, they're not intimidated by my winning, yeah, but they're also not afraid of my, my failing and yep. my struggling. And I found the best relationships are built around that. And, yep. if we, and, I, and I, I don't think you and I are going to check the box of winning. Yeah. Okay. If we're going to yeah. tie a bow on this. Yeah. Okay, and we could have ended on the power of God, and yep. we could have ended on the tools we need. Those yep. are easy, and we'll, we'll maybe hit yeah. those another yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, and they're a critical component of you bring this down. But, but I'm telling you, yeah. bringing this down is, is, is you and I are not going to check the box without the right people and learning how to do relationships right. Because you can even have the right people in your world. Yeah. But if your lenses are screwed up, mm. okay. So, and what I've discovered, JD, is all these things work so well together because yeah. people brought into your life yeah. will actually fix your lenses. But if you don't fix your lenses. You won't be able to see the right people that have been brought into your world. But I think right now, if I could say some things that yeah. I believe God's doing yeah. is he's orchestrating a lot of divine partnerships. Yep. Okay. Yep. And they're not missionaries going to Africa together. They're business people going into business to get, you see what I mean? Yeah. The, the, yep. the, yep. the scent, the divine go yep. there's a divine yep. go into all the world to bring impact to bring change but a lot of the partnerships a lot of the friendships a lot of the relationships are going to be going into some of those spheres yeah. together yep you know yep yep and so i just think you know if i could sum it all up and yep. land the plane with yep. this yep um convergence is you and i live in the authentic life we were created to be and that's a confident life, JD. Mm, yeah. That's a life that's broken contract with fear, with insecurity, with anxiety, and with rejection. 
and all the things that have tried to govern our thoughts yep. and changed our filter. Yep. And we get back to the confident version of ourself and we begin to run in the lane, run in the wiring, run, yep. run with the gifting and the passion and the, the, the thing that our vehicle, that our engineering was designed to run on. We got to find it. Yeah. And if we haven't found it yet, it's okay. Yeah. We'll find it. Yeah. And then once we find it, we can get better at it. We can yep. actually get yep. better at the track. Yep. You know, the first time trial, you do a track, you might be at two minutes and 30 seconds. The next time it's 220 and you just slowly hone, you learn the corners, you, you master the road, you eventually get better. But then we got co-pilots. We got people we're doing life with. We got people in our pit. Yep. You know, we got people changing tires with us. We got people whose tires we're going to change. Yeah. I feel like I need people on my team, JD, that serve me. Yep. But I need people that I'm serving too. Of course. And that's kind of the nature of the team. Yep. Um, and then I just think, man, you're one of the guys in my life that's made my life better. Mm. I'm not dude, even kidding. Dude, and, I, and, I, and the feeling is 100% mutual. Back at you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> officially, the longest one yet. Wow! Right, and that's saying a lot already because wow. they're all long. That's the backstory, <laughs> though. That's on you, man. You yeah. you went after no, me. I'm you went after the. I'm goods, celebrating man. this. I actually <laughs> would have been like felt like I let you down if this was a short podcast. Oh wow! So, folks, if you're still tuned in, and those that know us and know Colin, I know you are. And you just heard the backstory of all backstories that you never heard before. And I got it out of them. And I heard at least five or six. I didn't think I was going to share this today. I didn't plan on sharing this to anybody, not just in a podcast, but to anybody. And I got it out of Only them. Only JD, baby. I got it out of them because the amount of people we're going to help indirectly by that backstory alone. I know my videographer is like, Ugh. but let me tell you, the people are going to identify with the backstory. Yeah. And that way the convergence is going to mean that much more yeah. because they know the backstory and how he got there mm. and how he, where he came from, how he got to convergence, where his confidence came in, you know, that was powerful stuff right there. Really powerful. So dude, I love you. Love you, you have made an impact on my life mm. in such a short period of time. I've known you for six months. I'm closer to you. I feel wow. more um, uh, connected to you than frankly anybody I've ever been connected to in my life mm. other than my parents, my children, or my wow. wife. And that's Incredible. a fact. Wow. And I'm talking even family. Yeah. And so, dude, I love you. I appreciate you taking the time to come in here. It's my honor. And, and my real deal talk, baby. That's a wrap. Uh, love uh, it, bro. Till the next one. Let's go. Yeah. Love let's you, go. JD. Yeah. Love it, dude.